Many agile organizations struggle with estimation accuracy and the ability to forecast early at the project or release level. Part of this struggle is the insistence that the team use time-based estimation practices. Truth be told, there are only two things certain about time-based estimates. They're all time-based and they're all wrong. Each team member approaches work with a different skill set and different tools to get the job done. What one person could be a 15 to 30 minute task could take a different team member a whole day or two or more to complete. This deficiency started when we were youth. We always thought that we could achieve the impossible and would challenge ourselves to do things as fast as possible. Children often ask parents to count and tell them how long it took to do a task or to reach a destination. As parents, we strive to be kind and cater to the child's desire to play this game. Sometimes we even leverage the I'll time you and see how long it takes as motivation to speed up the process. Even though in our heart of hearts we know that these estimates are unrealistic and unfounded. The Agile community has embraced relative complexity based estimation practices as the new standard. The consistent issue we face even with relative complexity estimates, is that organizations are never really asking for true estimates. They tend to emphasize that a story point must have some value. For some, it is still time-based, as the number of ideal days to complete, or one point equals a certain number of hours. This logic is flawed, as time should not relate to complexity. Other organizations tie this relative unit to a dollar amount or cost to build the story or backlog item. Some groups even use the story point to equate to the number of people needed to complete an item in question. Once we stray from story points being only a size-based value and try to make them equal something, our ability to accurately estimate and forecast comes to a halt. We have all been there in a planning meeting where we take hours to talk about 8 to 10 stories only to discover that we went into way too deep of detail and leave the meeting feeling awful about our estimates that are now locked in and some leader will be tracking every moment against the estimate that we provided. The only problem with the traditional way we have been taught to leverage story point estimation is that we are using a number. By simply using a number, we are leaving the impression that a number must be equal to some value. To the team working on a project, that number may mean one thing while to an executive team, that number may mean something completely different. This frustration should not exist. We need a better way, a way that allows us to accurately forecast what work we can complete without being committed to a strict time standard. We need to separate the number from the estimate in order to clearly express what the number means. There is a simple example we can use to make this separation. The best experience I have at explaining this principle is to compare the estimate to a shoe size. For example, I wear a size 10 shoe. What exactly does that mean? Does it mean that it took 10 hours for someone to create my shoe? Does it mean that my shoe costs $10 each or $20 for the pair? Is the number indicative of how many people it took to assemble or build the shoe? Obviously, none of these are true. Even though the shoe size is indeed a number, that number is indicative of a relative size compared to other shoes. While some US size 10 shoes would fit me just fine, some finer shoes have additional sizing metrics for the width and the arch, etc. No two pair of shoes fit exactly the same. The counter to this example would be to walk into a fine clothing store and ask the clerk to find you a 12 hour shirt and a 14 hour pair of pants. Not only would they think you've lost your marbles, but they would also feel compelled to tell you that sizes are not measured using time. In other words, whether you use dog sizes, monument sizes, shoe sizes, or my all-time favorite t-shirt sizes, we need to get to a point where the number or type only equals a relative size and is not tied back to any other metric. In order for the sizing to be relevant and meaningful, we must follow this practice. The next best step is to go ahead and tie the size back to a number in order to have the ability to forecast. In organizations where an Agile Dad coach is present, we teach that an extra small maps to one, a small is two, medium is three, large is five, and an extra large is eight. This leverages the Fibonacci scale and allows us to calculate the number of complexity units a team can successfully create during a sprint. 
This number is often referred to as velocity or team velocity. Over the course of three to six sprints, this number will firm up and teams will have a good idea of how much work they can take on during any given sprint. Once we have a solid number, we can leverage this number to forecast future sprints, releases, or even high-level projects with much greater accuracy. I hope this information was useful to you. Please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment below telling us more about what techniques you use to enhance your Agile estimation practices. To learn more about this topic or how you can leverage Agile DAG coaching and training within your organization to better your Agile implementation, please feel free to visit us at agiledad.com or call us at 1-866-94-AGILE. You can always send us an email as well to learn more at agiledad.com. Thanks again, and we hope to hear from you soon.